Hello everyone, my name is Sébastien Duval and uh, I will present this work which is joined with Begul Bilgin, Noren de Meyer, Itamar Levy and François-Xavier Standard. This is a work about looking for S-boxes suited for low latency masking and we will care in particular about and depth. Um, in this talk I will first introduce the subject and then I will uh, develop a tool that we made. This tool uh, is made to optimize the implementation of small S boxes, both for AND depth and for the number of AND gates. And then I will talk about how we looked for uh, low AND depth S boxes on larger sizes by two approaches. The first approach uh, is a follow up of the previous talk. Um, we uh, look at power maps and we use affine equivalence to search for good power maps. And the second approach is uh, about trying to go for even larger sizes using length doubling structures. In the introduction, I will talk about SPN and in particular about S-boxes, which is the object that we are interested in here. <clears throat> and we'll talk about side channel attacks and about masking, which is a countermeasure to them. And in particular, I will talk about glitches and the uh, impact on undepth. <clears throat> So an SPN is a structure which is quite standard to build um, uh, cri symmetric cryptography primitives. We have a picture here of two rounds of an SPN. So one round of an SPN is first having a round key addition of a secret round key. Then we have a layer of uh, small S boxes. This is a non-linear layer. And then we have a linear layer with a big diffusion function. This is one round and we iterate this as many times as we need until, re until we reach security. Um, in this talk we will focus on the S-box. The properties we want of this S-box is that it should be highly non-linear in the sense that it should have a high algebraic degree, it should have a low differential uniformity and it should have a low linearity. Um, in this talk we will uh, summarize low differential uniformity and low linearity into low worst probability, which is the worst between the two. And also we want this S-box to be lightweight. Um, side channel attacks are a type of attack in which we consider that the attacker can observe more than the input and the output of a function because the attacker can also observe the implementation and any measure that uh, is doable while the implementation uh, is working. Um, so this can leak some information. Um, so the attacker can look at any physical observable measures uh, on the implementation and these can depend on the secret data that is being manipulated. So such measures could be time, energy consumption, electromagnetic uh, emissions, power consumption or many more. And these leak information about the secret on intermediate variables of the computation. So we need to handle this, we need to counter this, and the most popular countermeasure to uh, side channel attacks at the moment is masking, in particular Boolean masking, uh, which is a type of secret sharing in which we share a variable x into d shares which, uh, which sum up to the, sh to the value x that we want to protect. The cost of masking is uh, linear for linear operations such as uh, XOR gates, uh, linear in the number of shares, that is. And for non-linear operations, such as AND gates, um, the cost of masking is roughly quadratic in the number of shares. So the AND gates are uh, costlier to mask. This is why we usually try to minimize the number of AND gates in a circuit. But what is uh, less known than this is that uh, we also need to care about the AND depth. And this matters in particular in the case of hardware implementations. Um, that is because of glitches. Glitches are uh, electronic phenomena. Um, they are in ephemeral incorrect values which happen on the wires between clock edges. So in your electronic circuit, you sample on the clock edges and at those times you are sure that the values that you sample are correct. But between the clock edges, there are still values on the wires. They are possibly incorrect, but there are still values there and they depend on the data, so they can depend on secret data. So we need to make sure that these values don't leak anything. And we do this using registers, which are synchronization layers with the clock signal. 
Uh, when cytochrome attacks are not involved, um, such synchronization is already used. For example, when we want to reuse a gate, like in a loop, to make sure that the data that is in the gate uh, is clean before we start a new iteration. Um, but when cytochromes are involved, um, the, atta the attacker can observe glitches, uh, so uh, we can use registers to counter this. When we mask, observing the glitch of a masked XOR gate gives roughly no information about the secret data. But observing the glitch of a masked AND gate does give a lot of information about the secret data that is manipulated. So we need to synchronize uh, using a register in each AND gate. Um, this has an impact on AND depth um, because that means that nonlinear operations require a register and that means that uh, since the number of clock edges is equal to the register's depth, uh, that means that the layers of AND gates reduce the latency of the circuit. So to have a low latency, primitives must have a low AND depth. This has not been considered much in the design of primitives uh, in the literature, and in particular it's not been considered much in the design of S-boxes. And this is the topic of this work. Um, so first I will present a tool that we developed, which optimizes both for AND depth and the number of AND gates jointly. This tool works for small sizes and for simple functions, such as quadratic functions, and it uses set solvers. Um, so this tool takes as input an S-box uh, as a lookup table, and it outputs a circuit with minimal AND depth and few AND gates. We know that it is not optimized for XORs. Um, we tested this tool on 4-bit S-boxes, and we used it uh, to optimize 5 and 6-bit S-boxes. Mostly uh, quadratics because they are simple. Um, if we look first at what existed, before. Well, here G stands for the uh, optimizing for the number of AND gates, and D stands for optimizing for the AND depth. And we can see that there were quite a few tools to optimize uh, small S boxes uh, in the literature, but uh, there was none to optimize for AND depth. ORS is the first, and uh, we do more than that, we optimize jointly for AND depth and for the number of AND gates. Um, we do this by adapting a tool by Kostofelen, which uses SAT solvers. Um, so, the goal of our tool is to optimize both for AND depth and for the number of AND gates jointly. We do this by modifying Stofelen's tool. Um, our tool uses a greedy algorithm which builds a graph with layers of XOR gates and layers of AND gates uh, with weighted edges, of which the weight uh, gives the AND depth, and the SAT solver is used to find which edges should be there in the circuit uh, for the circuit to fit the lookup table of the S-box. This is roughly the idea, and uh, the results are these. Well, we tested it on 4-bit S-boxes, uh, which is a, a size on which things are quite well understood. Um, we looked at many uh, S-boxes in the literature, and uh, we try to optimize for the AND depth. Uh, in many cases, we managed to reduce the AND depth without uh, increasing the number of AND gates. So just again in terms of AND depth. Sometimes there was a small cost in the number of AND gates, but these are very special cases. So we conclude uh, from this test case that the tool works well. And we also observe that most 4-bit um, S-boxes which have a good uh, worst probability are equivalent in terms of AND depth and number of AND gates. Um, so this is an interesting observation. And um, also what we observe is that the best AND depth that is achievable for 4-bit S-boxes, uh, if they have a good worst probability, the best AND depth we can reach is 2, which is not very good. We would like to have an AND depth of 1 which is why we will now try to look for other sizes of S-boxes. Um, we will uh, look at this with two approaches. The first approach is uh, an, a follow-up of the previous talk, uh, in which we look at power maps, in particular quadratic, quadratic ones, uh, using affine equivalents, and we also care about the cost of the inverse implementation. 
Uh, that is because um, some modes of operation, and in particular some modes of operation which um, are suited for side channel attack resistance, um, make use of the inverse of the S-box. So we need to make sure that the implementation of the inverse of the S-box is lightweight too. And this is not obvious. Um, so our goal is to use affine equivalence to search for low and depth uh, S-boxes which have an efficient inverse implementation which we will handle by uh, trying to find S-boxes for which the forward and the inverse S-box share a lot of their resources in the sense that with uh, the same electronic circuit we can uh, do more or less all of the forward and inverse S-box. And um, we will also try to make sure that if possible these S-boxes should be optimizable the tool. We managed to look at 5 to 11 bit S boxes, which is uh, quite a large var variety of uh, sizes, uh, with sizes which are not very well understood yet. Uh, there are a few limitations, because, for instance, the tool uh, cannot work for large or complicated S boxes. And um, we only look at affine equivalence classes, which prevents us from uh, having a precise number of XOR gates. For our implementations, and um, for size, sizes larger than six, we cannot look at uh, AND gates anymore. We only look at AND depth. Um, but still, this gives uh, some information. If we look at the results, well, for five-bit S boxes, <coughs> this is what we get. The first observation that we have is that there is no optimal uh, S box on this size. Um, the optimal S-Box would be having a good worst probability for an S-Box which uh, shares a lot of resources with its inverse and uh, with both the forward and the inverse uh, implementation having an depth one. This is not possible on 5 bits. But what is possible is having an an depth for which the forward S-Box has an depth one and the uh, inverse S-Box has uh, an depth two with a good worst probability and a low number of XOR gates. This is doable, for instance, using uh, the function x to the 5, because x to the 5, actually its inverse, is x to the 5 applied twice. So this allows, of course, to implement x to the 5 and its inverse with a lot, uh, with a lot of resource sharing. Um, and we also observe something interesting, which is that uh, on 5 bits, if an S-box and its inverse both have and depth 1, then the S-box and its inverse are a fine equivalent, which is an interesting observation. On 6 bits, it's rather similar, in the sense that, similarly, we don't have any optimal S-boxes, but we do also have S-boxes with a good worst probability, and depth 1, and the inverse with and depth 2, and a low number of and gates. Um, and we do have the same property, that is that uh, if uh, an S-box and its inverse both have an depth 1, then they are both affine equivalent. Um, here also, the power map x to the 5 is interesting, because it can be implemented with its inverse with a lot of resource sharing, because x to the 5 is actually, uh, well, its inverse is actually x to the 5 multiplied by x to the 8, which is a linear function. Uh, this is a bit less of resource sharing than in the case of uh, 5 bits, because uh, here we require a multiplication in the find field, which uh, still costs a bit in terms of uh, AND gates and, and depth. Um, and if we look at other sizes, 7 to 11 bit S boxes, well actually, on every size, apart from uh, size 8, um, the, we, we find very nice S boxes, which have a low uh, worst probability, which have uh, low and depth, and with the inverse having a rather low and depth too, and with some resource sharing between the forward and the inverse S-box. So what is interesting here is that um, there are some very promising power maps on large sizes which are not very well understood. So which would be very interesting, and I think it's very uh, worthwhile to look a bit more into these sizes because such as boxes could be very useful. Um, now for the second approach, we will try to go for even larger sizes, 
by using length doubling structures such as Firestorm, Misty, and Bridge uh, to build structured S boxes. So the idea here is that if we have larger S boxes, we can actually hope for a better worst probability in the sense that the, the worst probability can be much lower than for small S boxes. If the worst probability is lower, uh, that means in a whole primitive, like in a whole SPM, we may require less rounds. And less rounds means a lower end depth for the whole primitive. So larger S boxes, uh, if we can find some with a low end depth and a good uh, worst probability, they can actually imply a lower end depth for the whole primitive. Um, what we do have uh, in, on uh, large sizes is S boxes with a good worst probability and a low end depth. We also have some structured S boxes only on 6 and 8 bits, which have a good worst probability and an efficient inverse in terms of resource sharing with the forward S box. And what we want is to have a good worst probability, a low end depth, and some structure to allow for an efficient implementation and uh, some resource sharing with the inverse. Uh, our approach is to build such large S boxes from smaller ones and to optimize the small ones using the tool. The structures that we will use are these. Um, a 3 round Firestone network, a 3 round Misty network, and the bridge structure. 3 round Firestone, 3 round Misty uh, were already used to build S boxes. A 3 round bridge is actually a fine equivalent to something that existed, which was used in the Litlin S box. Um, what is interesting with these structures is, well, you what you do is you split an input X, which is an N bit, into two halves on, of uh, N over two bits, and then you only do operations on half the size of bits, so on F N over two bits. You do XORs on N over two bits, and you do operations uh, S1, S2, and S3, which are nonlinear, but on N over two bits. And why are all three of these structures interesting? Um, well, actually, it's because um, for a 3 run Firestone network, in the forward uh, implementation, the end depth will be that of going through all three of S1, S2, and S3. And it's the same for the inverse. So you, you will go through three SI for the end depth for a Firestone network. Uh, but actually, for the MISTI network, uh, from the input to the output, you only go through two of the SI. So the end depth for a MISTI network is only two in the forward direction, two of the SI. And for the backwards direction, so for the inverse, you need still to go through three of the SI uh, in terms of end depth. But for the bridge structure, you only go through two of the SI, both for the uh, forward and for the inverse direction, which is interesting. It can lead to a low end depth. This is the intuition. And now if we look at the results, um, I only put three kinds of uh, grades in this table, so a check mark to say good, a uh, dash to say uh, that it's decent, and a cross to say that it's bad. Uh, and first we will just look at uh, size 6, so 6 bits, because it's uh, quite representative of, of some phenomena. So what we can see is that uh, Firestone Network, um, Misty and Bridge all give a good worst probability, but uh, Misty and Bridge give a better uh, forward implementation that's in terms of end depth mostly. And the bridge structure also gives a better inverse implementation. And this actually um, appears in most of uh, the sizes. What we can usually see in, in the whole uh, table is that um, bridge is always slightly better than Misty uh, because it's better slightly for the inverse implementation. Uh, that bridge is the best for end depth, but what we also observe on, on some sizes is that sometimes Firestore outperforms Misty and Bridge in terms of worst probability. So this can also be an interesting uh, structure to use. And it's also better uh, for resource sharing with the inverse. Um, but globally what we can uh, observe is that uh, if we forget for once about the uh, the inverse implementation, we have some very good uh, options, 
which have an excellent uh, worst probability and a very, very good uh, forward implementation. So these are very interesting uh, S-boxes to use. And also, even if we look, uh, including the inverse implementation, we still have some very good uh, candidates uh, on such very large sizes, which are not usually considered. So um, we have some low end depth uh, S-boxes with a very good worst probability on very large sizes. And this can actually uh, lead to a low end depth in some primitives, hopefully. So this uh, is the end of the talk. Um, let's see what, uh, what we've been through. Um, what we did was an exploration of a large space of S-boxes uh, in, uh, in a search for low de and depth S-boxes. And we explored so some sizes which are not usually considered and which are not well understood. Um, but some S-boxes on these sizes were very promising. Um, we also observed that 4-bit S-boxes, well, the case is mostly settled, but it's bad for and depth And larger S-boxes can actually be very promising for this. Uh, we also observe, as a side note, that 2n-1 bit S-boxes seem to be uh, better than 2n bit S-boxes. Um, there's a lot of future work needed. Uh, first, we, uh, we need to look at what happens in full primitives. So if we plug these S-boxes into a full SPN, for instance, uh, what, what happens? Do we need uh, less runs indeed? Uh, what what re truly happens in a full primitive? Um, we also need more study of large S-boxes, because they are really not well understood. And, of course, better automatic tools that can always be useful to look at larger or more complex S-boxes. Uh, one takeaway message uh, uh, that we should always think about is that undepth is important for secure hardware cryptography. And uh, also, uh, there's a lot more detail in the paper, and in particular, there is a large portfolio of concrete circuits for all these S-boxes, for all these sizes. So if you are looking for uh, implementations of S-boxes, there are many uh, different choices in the paper. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer during the questions session.